purchase of your new Mercedes-Benz A-Class. I'm Rebecca Sides and I'll be talking you through some of the main controls. To start, we have your key. You'll be given two keys on handover. To open the car, press and hold this button. To lock the car, press and hold this. The next feature to explain is the child locks. If you come to the rear door, if you open the door, you will see a black lever. To lock the car, press up, and to unlock, press down. That will not enable the rear doors to be open when children are inside. Coming round to the rear, to open your boot, press and hold the lever, and the button the boot will rise. Coming inside, we have a first aid kit in the rear wall. You will of course get your handbook and wallet, which will come with the vehicle, which explain all the main controls. And then under the floor of the boot, we have your warning triangle and your tyre fit kit. To pull the boot down, simply pull the handle and allow to close. Coming round to the left hand side of the car, to open the fuel cap, push once and it will open. Inside, the nozzle will tell you exactly what fuel you have, this one being diesel. If you rest the cap on there, it will stop the car from getting any scratches. And to replace, simply pop in and twist. And on here, we have your tyre pressures. Coming to the inside of the vehicle, we have your electric mirrors and your electric windows. In order to activate the, the mirrors, just press the left or the right, and then you can control the position of where you'd like it to go. Coming below, we have your electric windows for the front and your electric windows for the rear, and the option to lock the rear windows if you want to, if there's children in the back. Simply press once to turn it on, and turn once more to turn it off. The car is fitted with automatic central locking, but you can override this by either locking or opening the vehicle if you so wish. Coming to the seat itself, in order to take the seat higher, simply pull the lever, and in order to take the seat lower, simply push it down. In order to move the seat forward or back, you have a lever on the left hand side. If you lift and pull forward, or if you lift and push back. You also have a lumbar support, which you can twist this knob here, which will allow the seat to be more comfortable, if you so wish. Coming to the steering wheel section itself, the first part would be the, the ignition. Pop the key in once and a full turn and your engine will start. We then have your handbrake. In order to release, pull once. And in order to push back on, just simply press. You'll then see a letter P come on the dash, which will indicate that the handbrake is on. Above there, we have your automatic lights. The car will come with them set to automatic, so you don't need to alter those unless you so wish. And to the left, you have your fog lights. Coming up, we then have your gear shift, which is on the steering wheel and not in the centre. In order to activate, you need to have your foot on the brake. It is down into drive. Ignore the beeping, that's just the parking sensors. Up into reverse and press the silver button to park. So once more, foot on the brake, down into drive, up into reverse and P for park. All cars are also fitted with an automatic handbrake. If you press and hold the brake as far as it will go, the word hold will come on the screen, which will indicate that the handbrake is fully depressed if you're at traffic lights. Coming over to the centre of the vehicle, you have your main menus. The right hand side allows you to answer or end a call and also to increase or decrease your volume. There is also a mute button. Coming to the left hand side, you have your main controls on the dashboard screen. To activate the menu, simply press left or right and the screen will come up. If you want to go through a menu, press the up or down button and that will allow you to change your menus. Starting with trip, you can look at your current speed, how many miles you've done and your fuel consumption, which is useful for the business driver. Going along, you can then check your navigation, your audio or your telephone if you so wish. Here we have your steering wheel and in your indicator and windscreen wipers. Press down to go left, press up to go right and back to the centre to cancel. And in order to do your windscreen wipers, they are range sensitive on the first setting, but you can manually override that if you wish by just increasing it. Finally, to clean the window, just press and hold the button there and the wipers will wash. In order to open the bonnet, pull the lever under the dash column and the bonnet will open. You'll find the wiper fluid to the right of the engine. If you have sat-nav on your vehicle, the car will come with one of these boxes. This will contain your SD card. Simply open the box, take out the SD card and pop the SD card into the slot on the dashboard provided. When you enter the sat-nav, it will ask you to accept that this is for this car. Simply press yes and then you'll bring up your nav screen. I'm now going to talk you through how to set up a destination. 
and today we're going to go to the dealer Mercedes-Benz Liverpool. If you use the centre console here and click down to go to where to, scroll right to address and press enter. The easiest way is to enter a postcode. It will automatically start with the letters. We're going to scroll to L and then to get the numbers just let me scroll around to the number 2 and an at and then press down and now the numbers will come up. Scroll over to 3 in my case for our postcode. I now need a space so I scroll to the little dash and press enter. Just then to finish off the postcode it's 7 and then it automatically takes me back to the letters D and B. It will then come up with a tick which indicates that the postcode is correct. I'll click down to enter. It brings up some options of addresses on that street. Press enter once more and then go. And now the sat nav will automatically route me. Please try to highlight a route. And of course you'll hear the lady talking. Secondly I'm going to talk you through how to set up your phone. If you press tell on the dash here it will come up with the options to connect device. I have an iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, if you go to settings and Bluetooth, the same setup will work, but just to show you how to do it on an iPhone. You have to be in your Bluetooth menu on your phone. So go to settings and Bluetooth, ensure that your Bluetooth is on. If you're not in this screen, it won't work on an iPhone. You then need to go to connect device and search for phones. Again, always using the button in the center here and click start search. The car will now search for any phones which are in range. It's found myself. I then click down again to accept and the screen on the car and the screen on the phone will now come up with a pairing code. I click pair to accept and pair to accept on the car and the phone will now be set up. You won't need to do this again unless you deauthorise your phone. This now will mean that if the phone was to ring I can answer in the car or I can still answer on my phone but it will automatically route through the car for safe driving and legal driving whilst being in the car. The phone book on your phone will also come through to the vehicle under name. This will take a few minutes to load for the first time. So once you have your phone book set up, you can go to name, click down and all of your contacts will come through. Finally on the dash, we have some other options for you to look at. You have your radio, which you can go left or right and store any radio stations that you like. In order to set a station as your one of your favorites, simply press and hold one if you want it set as preset one and it will come up on the dash there. You have media as different ways of listening to music. So that means if you wish to, you can plug in an iPhone or iPod into the center console in the USB connector and play music via the car. We then have your phone button, which I've already been through, and also an answer and a put down button if you wished, if you wish to make calls on there. Finally, coming down on this particular vehicle, it has heated seats. In order to activate, press once and the three lights will come on and in order to drop the heat simply press again and that will turn the heat off. Again that may not be a standard feature on your vehicle so just double check. And then coming down to the centre we have your air conditioning which is temperature controlled for passenger and driver. In order to activate simply turn the dial up or down and that will decrease or increase the temperature. Here we have a 12 volt cigarette lighter, a cup holder and another cup holder here. And that's everything on the vehicle. I hope that you like your new car.